Hello, hello, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to HIV Live. Uh, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of land on which we live, create and learn on today, paying respects to elders past, present and emerging. Hello, Jeff Chan, we are back. Hello. Thanks for having me again. How are you doing today? Doing very, very good. Very excited to jump back into the painting. Fantastic. As you can see, everyone, we do have a little bit of different of a setup today. Not only do you have a different host, but also that host is doing all the tech side of things. So we are um, paving new ground today, um, but we will continue doing that in this illustration. So right back to it, Jeff, don't you think? All right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll do a quick recap on where we are so far um, and maybe like the steps that I took to get here. So as usual, or well, not as usual, normally I do more painting, but this time we started off with a bit of a line art sketch, nice and rough, something like this with a bit of a background. And then we started to clean up the lines, something like this, then start to establish some values. And that's where we're up to now. So a lot more painting, which is very exciting because things will move quite fast. Um, even just during our break, I was looking at this and I was thinking about the things I want to change and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, really excited to get into it. <laughs> I, I find it so funny that you say that now things will be moving quickly <laughs> where really the previous stream was like a second and then now we have this, <laughs> um, this uh, oh, what's it called, uh, gradient map illustration, right? So yep. if it's going to go even quicker now, I think everyone will got to buckle in our seat belts for this one because- uh, The blink. Yeah. Oh no. It's the all reference. different already. <laughs> but yeah, so everyone, we're going to have a lovely, exciting time today. Technomancer Johanna is, is what I'm seeing in the chat. Oh, so thank you for that, Flynn. Um, speaking of chat, the chat that we're going to be looking at today is the um, Behance chat. So if you're watching on YouTube, head on over to behands.net slash live. Um, that is where now mod Flynn today will be uh, answering any of your questions that you have and also looking for and passing on your questions to me. So that's, that's the place that you want to be at today. Yeah, come ask all the questions you want. Anything art related, career related, I'm open to answering all that. Absolutely. And, and we do have uh, a couple of topics um, that we chatted about that we want to run through. But of course, so welcome to take on any of your questions, uh, whether it is about line work. Um, I'm sure we can answer one or two on those. Um, but then about colouring and, you know, finishing off and rendering uh, your pieces of work and, and maybe even where those pieces of work go next. So I'm seeing, are you still refining sort of the, the light and shape of the, the illustration now? Yeah, I think the goal is to get it to a point where it doesn't need to rely on the lines so much anymore. I get mm -hmm. a lot of information through the forms and lighting. So I'm just going over everything. And just as I do that, um, it'll, it will raise those lines that I had initially and replace it with lighting, like, uh, like what I'm doing here on the finger. Yeah, Introduce right. some light direction from the right side and just got to keep that consistent throughout just make sure every lighter value is starting to come from the, the right side nice so I, I noticed then that in your finished pieces or in your work in general you don't really see the initial line work is that sort of a stylistic choice that you've always um done or, or has that kind of evolved into being your process now uh, I think so. I, I prefer not having the lines because it brings out the more semi-realistic style that I prefer. Mm. Even in more stylized pieces, like a lot of my artwork is based on like fundamentals of, of, of realistic lighting. So um, I try to get rid of the lines wherever I can um, because lines can indicate some stuff in lighting as well. It, mm. it, it can suggest like a darker area um, especially if you have like an area of, of highlight like here and then you try to show uh, lines in here, it'll feel more like it's there's like a deep shadow in there. Um, right. And instead, yeah. 
yeah, you need to try to eliminate that where possible. And I think you'll see, um, maybe I'll, I'll make a copy of this. And as I render, we'll come back to this version where it has some lines and we'll see like the effectiveness the effectiveness of uh, eliminating those lines. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's it's so interesting because I've I've never really thought about it that way in the sense that the mm. lines would indicate shadow or drastic color change. Um, yeah. But of course that makes perfect sense. Uh, so I'm gonna be thinking of that the next time I I pick up um, some pen and paper. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like um, and like something that I like to do that I'm not doing today actually is I like to keep the line layer separate from the render. And mm -hmm. then I try to hide the line layer and see if the lighting is holding up without the lines and if any information is left out without the lines. Um, and I try to bring it back with purely lighting. And um, you sort of like keep flipping back and forth between showing the lines and, sh and taking it off just to keep checking um, how that's working. Mm. And eventually, if you can get all the information from the lines to show through lighting only then it will start to look a bit more realistic and then the lines will actually feel out of place by that time yeah it's because then you i mean you realize then that the light well the lines are there to guide you to make sure that you don't lose the shape of what you're drawing um exactly yeah but they're they're really just like the scaffolding like the foundation um mm -hmm. which of course i'm using the word foundation because my family and i started watching the show um, and I can really recommend it so far. We're only on episode episode two, and there was a massive cliffhanger, um, as you'd expect in it. So, very much looking forward to continuing that. But um, yeah, go, going back to what we're doing right now. Um, yeah, so building up your your foundation or your um, scaffolding or template, and then bringing it to life with color, light, and shadow uh, is a a really effective technique. Yeah, I really think that that's been working for me so far. Otherwise, just jumping straight into um, into painting like what I usually do, that also mm. is a very comfortable way of getting straight to um, focusing on lighting. Excellent. And and when sort of you're you're starting with lighting, I know there's you know there's three point light, there's directional light. Do you have a configuration? Not configuration might not be the right word, but do you have? <laughs> now I can't not think of the word foundation. I'm trying to fit <laughs> it into every sentence. So I'm going to try not to do that because that's not very interesting television. Um, but essentially, do you have like different different lighting rigs set up for uh, different sort of toned pieces of work, um, or or is it? more like it depends what the piece is and it really is informed more by the piece uh i think the piece does dictate the lighting a little bit um but you know we can we can frame how we want um our piece to look mm. and and determine that lighting ourselves since we're pretty much like the the creator of like the world of inside the illustration okay. so um yeah like there's a lot of stuff to do with mood that lighting can help you with uh, like for this one, for example, having areas that are in shadow, like shadow casting over mm. parts of her body, I think that brings out a bit more creepiness. It's like you're not sure what's what's hidden, what yep. else is like going to pop out. <laughs> like this hand you might have noticed or something like that. And then bringing um, other creepy bits forward and framing. Uh, I was talking about this last time, um, framing parts of the illustration so we can bring attention to those areas. Um, it's all it's all done by lighting. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'm just noticing now, like, what elements of this piece are gonna. If this was a movie or this was animated, like, where's the jump scare? Essentially, <laughs> like, how do you hide it? And then once once people realize, like, oh my gosh, there's a hand, um, or like talents or whatever, is when they least expect it, and then it's just like blows their mind uh, <laughs> with the piece, but. Uh, we've got a, a wonderful question from um, the lovely Flynn. What is your go-to brush? Um, the good old standard round brush, which is what I'm using now. Um, there's a good variety within the round brush that I, I like to flip between. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the just my standard brush that has a bit of spacing on it, so it gives me some, some light texture. Mm. There's my harder one that is 
a little bit more opaque. I sometimes use this for line work. And uh, then the soft brush, which gives me some nice blends. I think just those three can can do a lot for us. Absolutely. And um, yeah, you don't have to have the like uh, the most custom brushes to do your artwork. I think as long as you have like the fundamentals, or even if you just want to enjoy art, you know, mm -hmm. like the the round brush can do that for you. Yeah, it's it's very much not about the um, the tools, um, but how you use them. So if exactly. you only have one pencil versus someone that has a full. 24 piece set you know you can create just as wonderful work either way it's it's really the best tool is the tool that you have and and using it to your own uh, advantage or making it do your bidding so to speak to to keep on the spooky uh, halloweeny theme um and i see that we've got some color uh going into to... it now so i'm using gradient maps now mm -hmm. um just putting it um, placing it in for the background mainly at the moment. Um, not trying to edit the character yet. Just trying to establish some of the context so I do know how to um, light the character when it comes to that. And I'm trying to get like a, a cooler shadow and like a warm light. And uh, what's, what's the reason behind that? What's the story that you're trying to tell with the color? Um... I don't really think about that because <laughs> now when I think about it, maybe I, sh I shouldn't do like a warm light. Maybe I should keep everything very cool so that it does feel more spooky and mm. like uh, maybe it's moonlight that's hitting her and bringing out like uh, her her features. And if that's the case, if it's going to be cool lights, normally you want to you want to contrast your your hues in mm -hmm. um, between the shadow and light so that there's a bigger distinction between um, what we see. Um, otherwise your lighting will start to get mixed and then we can't really find the features inside of our artwork. It's very true and you don't want the colors to become muddy. Exactly. Um, and sort of then the hierarchy, because hierarchy you can um, distinguish that with color as well, not just shape and line. Um, it's kind of like, yeah. well, where's the where's the action happening? Exactly. It's something that you could do because I... I oh, Gosh, that's oh, scary. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool, but just it's. Oh, I find it so fun just going into the um, like the layer adjustments. Uh, I think it is and going like multiply or difference, yeah. and then sometimes it's just oh, the combinations just absolutely blow me away. Um, but what, what I was going to say just before, kind of maybe like the idea of there's a particular light emanating from the house. Yeah. And um, so maybe on the outside, it's sort of bleak and, and dark. But from the inside, it's this whole like it's warm, but it's scary. So like maybe like a den of some kind, like it's not actually the house. It's not the inside of a house. It's more like a spider's nest or something like that. Um, yeah and it's kind of like a mimic it's a mimic house <laughs> i wanted to add a, a bunch of like uh web inside here as well which Ooh, is uh yeah. exactly what you're talking about Fantastic. um and yeah it might be cool to see some contrast of like these temperatures like maybe the outside area is um that cooler light but then inside we can introduce something warmer like a, a warm glow somewhere so it mm. feels like something hellish is happening in here. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's like a, a crackling um, fireplace or something like that, like intending yeah. to be inviting to the kids that are coming trick-or-treating. Um, and so it's like, come in from the cold or something like that, and then I will eat you. <laughs> <laughs> How evil. See, now now the brains are just going, uh, going wild, but thankfully we do have a question uh, again from Flynn to to help us stay on track. So question is, where do you get your colors from and do you have a go-to color palette? Um, I think, again, that sort of depends on what I'm painting. I don't mm. think I have a go-to palette. I, there was a period where I was trying to add a lot more interesting hues like a, like a magenta in a, that like gets contrasted by like a tealish color. Mm. Um, and getting that that contrast but a lot of it is just based on the character and then using my color fundamentals to find color schemes like complementary colors or like going for like analogous color schemes and all mm. that 
um, yeah, I think being versatile with that and being open to different um, different types of color setups is important for for my job at least. Mm. I think um, if you you know if you're like an indie artist and you want to make a name for yourself, then I think um, having a particular color scheme will help a lot in getting your work noticed and uh, getting people to like remember like your work. But for me, I'm going to be creating like a bunch of different characters for different worlds, so I have to I have to be flexible with that. Yeah, it's interesting you you mentioned consistency because this is something that we were talking about just before we went live um, with like consistency in in posting work and sharing work. Um, But of course, consistency applies to the work itself too. Um, And how, for example, if you're working in a studio or working um, full time, potentially you, you want to be more flexible um, because you never know what kind of brief is going to come across your desk. Exactly. Um, and also you need to be flexible and work quickly, which, I mean, you you have both of that in spades. Uh, but then with freelance, maybe it's the case of, and I mean, you can argue that you need to be flexible with freelance as well, but it's, it's really this, um, you know, building up a, a style or building up like something to be known for, so people know like, mm, yeah. yes, I want a, a freaky Spider Woman character. Like, oh yes, Jeff. Jeff is the person <laughs> to do that for us. Um, and uh, it also speaks to you know for people starting out that if you making a, a bunch of creepy spidey ladies, that's you know the kind of work that people are gonna expect from you and maybe ask you to do so it's really important um going off on a bit of a tangent here uh along the spider web to to just be conscious of what kind of work you're putting out um yeah what your goals are as well exactly yeah and i see here we're now um getting the the terrified children <laughs> yeah at Slowly. least one first yeah. <laughs> so we get more, more of a narrative in this uh, illustration exactly did you um uh this is a related but somewhat uh tangential question did you ever go uh, trick-or-treating when you were younger i tried to but there's not much happening in australia in terms of halloween and trick-or-treating i think it's uh a lot more to do with uh, like clubs and all that will we'll theme things in Halloween, but we don't really have that trick-or-treating culture. Mm. Um, have you? Does that, did that work out for you if you did try? Yeah, it did. I, I feel so extremely fortunate because, and maybe like the odd one out almost, because I, a couple of times I went trick-or-treating um, and also had Halloween parties with my friends. Hopefully we'll have some kind of Zoom situation uh, this year because I've, friends uh, i'm very lucky to have friends all over the world so we'll see how i coordinate um (laughs) that again this year but yeah i went uh trick-or-treating uh comparing like halloween in in sweden versus halloween in australia i would say for me they felt quite similar i mean sweden or at least where i was living um in gothenburg like it was more the the costume element and going around and getting candy um not so much the at least again where i was living like um the the traditions or the the sort of the law behind it that that maybe other cultures you know emphasize more and um i do believe my parents were were sort of tolerant of the costumes perhaps um but that's kind of the where sort of the the line was drawn is like yes you can dress up um and ask for candy but uh let's just leave it at that and not not go (laughs) too extreme um and similar like here in australia at least i I could be completely misremembering but um definitely i felt like almost every year we did trick-or-treating and i have actually Oh, okay. Something I prepared earlier. Um, no, this is just a bucket um, <laughs> that I bought, so I would have it near me. You're ready to go. <laughs> uh, exactly. Got my nails, got the lantern, got everything. Um, so I'm going to fill that with full-size candy. Thank you very much. And um, and put that outside my apartment door for any 
uh, kids in the uh, apartment building or adults because um, Halloween is for for one and for all for everyone yeah all right <laughs> I'm trying to do, do some more color now um, yeah. maybe bring in that warm light we were talking about and I'm gonna do a cool little trick where I use a screen mode um, black layer with a gradient map attached and this is gonna give me some really nice effects Ooh. which hopefully will work out if i do this correctly i can just paint within like um wait that didn't work <laughs> let me bring this up oh this is very exciting there we go <gasps> get that warm glow happening in here something hellish is is happening oh wow this is wonderful <laughs> and it's 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 cra not crazy but it's it's so fascinating to see how just like one really one layer of color uh whether it is you know the details and the horns and the the legs <laughs> doing the legs <laughs> which legs <laughs> um or exactly which one um or uh like the sort of go fiery glow almost that you have now going in the background how that just immediately levels up uh, the drawing and so simply as well and similar with like the slight changing gray tones that you have on the on the kid at the front like it's very simple um maneuvers is not the right word but that's the one that is coming to mind like make simple yeah. like strategies and techniques um that just makes for a really really effective and emotive piece you don't have to do too much like uh i think as long as the focus area is clear mm -hmm. then uh the areas out here you can just sort of suggest it and i think best of all is there's a lot of tools on photoshop like going to the filter and then blurring um if you don't want anywhere to be too um, drawing too much attention so I can just blur the kid and then there's like it just feels like it's a suggestion that there's someone there yeah. you don't have to make them um, the star of the show absolutely oh Photoshop my one true <laughs> love <laughs> it's it's no secret Photoshop and I we go way back um, so Me I'm too. always excited to <laughs> to see all new and exciting things and, and see how different people uh, use Photoshop because you know not one person is gonna use it the same way as the other that's a really cool thing huh I, I like seeing other people's techniques and then taking from that and like adding my own spin on it and, and seeing what I can get out of it mm -hmm. uh, it's been happening a lot for me recently especially with like working at a new workplace and then talking to other artists there might be there's like a multitude of ways to achieve the same thing but then that mm -hmm. those methods can be used in other places in your workflow um, so it's really great to share ideas and just talk to other artists and see how they use the tools. Absolutely. Uh, this reminds me, um, and I have two topics in mind that I want to, that I want to go through, but, uh, yeah. first of all, have you ever done the, uh, draw this in your style? Cause I think that would really, um, that might really be very fun for you because it is uh well so what it is if you don't know what it is and for people in the the audience as well it's essentially someone creates a drawing and then deems it um sort of in the public domain so then other artists look at that drawing and then recreate it in their own style um mm -hmm. and so you have like the the same subject but then it's all uh it's all different um, but this also then brings me, because uh, you mentioned uh, studios again and, and working with other people and seeing how different people tackle um, the same task. We have a, a great reminder question from Flynn here in the chat. Um, how are you finding balancing your new role and freelance work? Um, it's, it's tough, I think. I think when you're committed to a studio full time, it it especially especially feel very committed to the project as well um then it, it's not easy to balance and i mm -hmm. think like it is starting to to wear me down a little bit where i do want to focus more on the full-time job and i'm not going to do much freelance um but yeah i think you have to really like love the work that you do in there to to do that um because sometimes 
uh, and the reason why I freelanced before this is because um, I liked working on a variety of projects and, and touching on a lot of different stuff. But um, what I'm on now is exactly what I like in terms of style and uh, and like the, the type of studio I'm working with, the type of people I, I get to meet in there. Um, so yeah, like I, I kind of think I'm, I'm gonna have to give up the freelance life and just focus on uh, what I'm working on now. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, the ebbs and flows. You, uh, it's all with, my mind went blank there. Um, <laughs> it's, it's all about, you know, seeking more opportunities and, and kind of, mm. yes, being a yes person to, to an extent and, and sort of trying out what, what fits and what doesn't fit is also really important. Um, but also recognizing that you know some seasons of life you'll do more freelance and some um, spookier seasons perhaps you are <laughs> doing more full-time work um, yeah so yeah that's that's great to hear that you can sort of rec you've been able to recognize that oh yeah maybe i need to uh cut back or adjust uh, the work that i'm doing because it isn't mm -hmm. um serving serving me at the moment yeah but well, some people like that hustle. It's it's a, it's a great way to, if you can sneak in some freelance, then mm. um, to to add like extra practice to your craft, um, because sure, personal work can do a lot for you, but um, working for a client and like problem solving, especially for for my role like as a concept artist, uh, it's important to keep that part of your brain working and and to not um, yeah, and, and like it, it keeps you on your your toes. I feel when you have to do stuff for a client. Absolutely, and and just to echo what Plume was saying too, it must be a big change uh, giving up freelance. But again, there's only so many hours in the day, and exactly. you've got to put your the people that you care about and your health um, first and in mind as well. Right. But um, speaking of people, we have some people in the chat. So we have Hello. Jessica and Tara. Welcome, welcome. Um, and of course. If you have any questions for, for Jeff today about the, the work or his process um, or the uh, Patreon or the Discord community, anything and everything, um, ask away and we'll, uh, we'll do our best to, to answer your questions. Oh, mate, this piece is looking so good. How the web's doing, you think? Yeah. Does it help the mood? I think that is a great, great choice. Great. <laughs> Helps me um, frame the, mm. the whole piece. Absolutely. And it, it kind of gives, gives the idea that this creature has been living um, in this house for quite some time as well. And uh, really gives, in my mind anyway, gives more context and uh, sort of mystery and story. Yeah, and, and actually, I got a pretty cool idea. Maybe I add like a little web cocooned up people <gasps> in the back. Yes. For victims. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love this so much. This is great. <laughs> I have to say selfishly as well, like, this is one of my favorite parts of, of these live streams is, you know, you you start the stream with one idea and then you get input from chat or you have a conversation or you discover a new tool because you're just button smashing i'm <laughs> um, button smashing right now <laughs> the keyboard because uh, that's my process personally um and then you end up with you know super cool pieces like this that are just really really freaky and great and it's just a good time and you learn so much I feel like I need like one more kid or something to help to be, to be with this guy. He feels very lonely. Maybe one that's already like halfway out of frame. It's already <laughs> yeah. running away, or like touching is him that, on the shoulder. Like, dude, we gotta go. Is that um, is that meme of that girl running away from a oh, yeah. burning house? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I should just throw her in. <laughs> I can feel like the kind of the alternate universe of this piece is, um, you know, the meme of the girl that is um, that is looking into the camera as 
house is burning down behind her, yes. just kind of smiling. That's uh, that's her child. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness, this is so good. Um, you have Jacob as well in the chat. Hello, Jacob. Um, saying that Jacob. she takes the children that take more than one candy from the bowl. Goodness Those bad me. Children. <laughs> I must say, I I did. Um, when I was trick or treating, and and certainly if I ever trick or treat again, I'm gonna make the most of it. So I'm sorry. Spider Lady, you're gonna, you're gonna have to do the <laughs> fight me for these candies. <laughs> Come at me, you watch out, she's got more arms than you. <laughs> yeah, but I use mine very efficiently. She's just got like all over the place. Like, da, da, da. <laughs> I'm like, <"Doo>, <laughs> oh, yeah, she, they're too long. You can, if you get in close, you can box her exactly. <laughs> close combat, that's yeah. where I. That's where I thrive. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, but to to do a bit of a, a throwback to the, the conversation that we were just having um, about work, you've yep. got some pretty exciting stuff coming up as well with Adobe Max. I sure do. So, uh, Flynn, maybe if you want to link that in the chat as well, that would be great. And, uh, yeah, Jeff, if you want to say any, any words on that, I'm sure everyone would love to hear it. Yeah, a lot more, expanding a lot more on, like, the, the whole speed painting and, like, mentality about um, growing as an artist. Uh, I share a bit of my story in there, so if you're interested in that, definitely check it out and, and sign up um, to the, what's it called? Adobe Max. Register. Yeah, that's it. Register yes. to... Uh, to the session <laughs> losing my words it's all good all your brain power is focused on this painting and uh that is just fine by me i can definitely <laughs> do more than enough talking <laughs> it's a skill to be able to draw and, and talk at the same time it um, is something i develop slowly through time would you say that um you know the the streams i'm assuming that the streams that you do on on discord with your um with your group there that that has helped you do more of the the drawing and the talking in the same time or is is that something incorporated in the in the mentorship as well i think all of the above <laughs> that you mentioned yeah um it all sort of started from twitch streaming i think uh and then like as you stream so many people ask you questions and you can't you know not entertained with the yeah. artwork as well so you can't I somehow learn to balance them. that yeah i can't not answer them. i can't just sit there and just talk either um so that's where that skill sort of developed mm. and yeah it's, it's it's useful i think somehow i'm able to autopilot a little bit like i'm making decisions it's like i have two brains somehow no three there's like one in my hand one up here and then there's like another one that's talking and one in my mouth <laughs> it's, it's all separated <laughs> somehow you heard it here, folks. Jeff has three brains. Yeah, that's the secret. <laughs> if you want to be good at art, you need to have multiple brains. Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, everyone can do it. It's all it's all practice. Mm. Don't, don't, don't listen to me. I found as well for me when I was when I've done streaming in the past, um, which is just so fun, and I hope to to get into it more. It kind of also helped me speed up because I, I realized that I was trying to entertain like I was trying to make something like an, an engaging experience mm -hmm. and so then when I you know got stuck trying to sort of figure out a design problem I just had to kind of like nope not doing this today we are live and we are wasting <laughs> other people's time by not making the making a decision um, and so it really helped me just get on with the work. Um, so I love that aspect of it too, that it, it does yeah. really, you know, channel the sort of the co-working um, mentality that you're you're being held accountable to someone. Held hostage. <laughs> uh, definitely. Much yeah. <laughs> like potentially these kids or the the kids in the cocoons in this illustration. She's she's made it. I think he's he's a goner, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> too curious. Mm -mm. Yeah. 
But speaking of curious, we are, I believe, a little over halfway um, right now. And if anyone has any more questions for for Jeff about this piece specifically or about uh, moving from full-time work to from freelance, moving to full-time work from freelance um, or mentorships or a work-life balance, then feel free to throw those questions in the chat and we will try to get to as many of them as we can today. Keep them coming. <laughs> and uh, I'm now just quoting Flynn. Um, for legal reasons, I am not endorsing this message, but throw your questions in the chat or the spider queen will get you. <laughs> Which um, I can neither confirm or deny what the spider queen will do. Here's a hint. <laughs> but this piece is looking fantastic. Very, very spooky. And hopefully this is uh, inspiring everyone in the chat as well to draw, draw Halloween based so just fun monsters and creatures um, next time you you're at the drawing table as they say <laughs> I've heard that I can confirm yeah like once <laughs> <laughs> just then <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh boy would you say that now you're because obviously you started with a large brush, brush size and sort of broad colours and now you're focusing more on the um, sort of the more finer details. Is is there a chance then that you will go back into uh, with a broader brush or will you now just keep going smaller and smaller um, into detail for the piece? Uh, I think if I want to... Like sometimes I'll probably want to push areas back, mm. so I'll use like a big brush again just to cover up some areas with uh, a bigger shadow, or something like this. Just hide that. Mm. Um, but yeah, pretty much at this point, this point, it's it's going into the details here and using that smaller brush to bring out more contrast to bring in more attention to the places that I, I want people to look. Fantastic. And uh, we do have two great questions from, from Tara. So the first one is, what's one piece of advice or thing you knew when you first started out? Um, it I, might, the question I might knew. actually be, what's one knew, piece, probably. yeah, what you wish you knew um, mm. it's possible. So we start, start with that first question. I think, um, I something I, I really didn't pick up for a long time was every aspect of the fundamentals of art, which I wish I did know. Um, so making sure you, because we all start off with pencil and uh, paper, right? Mm -hmm. So th there's certain um, fundamentals we don't get to touch on like value and, and lighting, not as much at least. It's very hard to do shading and all that with just pencil. So when I moved to digital, I kind of wish I knew more about um, all these other fundamentals I didn't get to touch on. So color, value, uh the lighting um and yeah like at least getting those fundamentals up to the level where my line work was mm. roughly um yeah that would have sped up my learning process a lot because there's only so much you can do with lines and um yeah the quicker you jump into those other fundamentals you can start to uh cover like your your weaknesses and um improve on um, aspects that you weren't able to touch on before was just pencil. Yeah, and, and speaking of lines, I mean, we, we talked about, about it at the beginning of the stream. Now what you're doing with shape and colors, you're covering up all those lines. So, so truly exactly. the lines will only get you so far. Mm -hmm. And of course, especially if you, you're approaching work in in the, the same or similar style as, as Jeff is. Of course, there's the, there's artists that love including lines in their work. And yeah. for example, love having that um, sort of scratchy, scribbly line. So um, the the disclaimer that we often have on the, on the stream is, you know, this is just how I do it. This isn't yeah. like 
the law <laughs> of of being an artist or of or of drawing. Yes, Flynn, chicken scratch. That's right. Um, and I think the 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 fun and exciting part of you know seeing how another person works and what they believe to sort of be like this is the um, the sort of tenant I guess of of drawing the way that I want to draw. Um, we can all you know take what we find useful from that and experiment and find our own way but but certainly I mean you can't go wrong with learning the the fundamentals and, and learning how to harness them uh, well in your own way I found that it helped me with other fundamentals um mm -hmm. my line work improved because I started to understand form a bit more and mm. I I've found ways to represent form through line work like if we reverse back to the sketch which is a little bit further back but I'll try to find my way there got this folder, folder if we go back to we'll get there i promise <laughs> see kids this is where naming your layers <laughs> helps but oh, no, here it is. i think the the spider queen will uh fight off the layer police um this go. time so representing forms in line work uh, we have, you know, the silhouette of the leg, but we can make it feel like it's coming forward by showing the contouring and how it comes forward. If you imagine this is like a cylinder, mm -hmm. these lines are representing this line. So we're, sh we're showing that front face of that cylinder coming forward. So finding that, like, I, I wouldn't have thought of these things if I were to, if I didn't touch on like uh, lighting fundamentals and, and form fundamentals. So yeah, I, I definitely think there's, that's like a big help. Wonderful. I just, I mean, I'll, I'll see it in the replay of the stream and, and a hello to everyone, or anyone rather, uh, watching uh, the replay of this as well. I just recoiled back when you uh, brought back the, the coloured illustration because it, <laughs> it's just such a contrast um, because this has so much more um, life and spookiness and jumping and at you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So many more legs, um, I feel like. But before we, we get to another great um, and uh, a super relevant question, we do have a bit of a silly one in between, um, yep. which is what is your favorite Halloween candy or Halloween lolly? Ooh, I think <laughs> not because of the taste, but because of the goofiness. It's the, uh, the vampire teeth. Oh, they, they taste horrible, but I just love putting them on. <laughs> it's so so bad i i cannot i would have to agree with you i would wear them so to speak yeah. but as soon as i'm done with them i was just like no uh-uh get out <laughs> i just eat it anyway it kind of melts in my mouth so oh just no it off. <laughs> goodness um yeah for me i think it's just like any any candy but especially if it's um candy from ikea like the um Ooh. the um Oh, what's it called? Yeah, uh, it's a plockgodis in in Swedish, but essentially it's you know all the candy that there's like a designated section, and then you take your scoop and you scoop out self serve candy. Um, wow, okay. which sounds horrible, but it's great, <laughs> um, especially in these times. But uh, I would say that would be my favorite kind of just like blanket statement candy is the the ones that you get at Ikea, because it reminds me of home. Um, but to steer away from the cheesiness, uh, although I do love embracing it, uh, we have another question from Jacob, um, which is, what advice would you give someone who is struggling to grow any type of audience? Um, I think looking at finding ways of blending between what's trending at the moment and your interest. I think yeah. that, you know, if you really care about the whole audience thing and you need to um, build that, then it is important to pull back on your interest a little bit, at least like maybe take back like 30% or 40% to incorporate a bit more of what's actually trending at the, at the time. Um, but you know, sometimes there's artworks that or like topics that will just happen to mesh really well with your, uh, your own interests. And, um, there kind of is always a niche and if you can tap into it and, and find it, um, get the right people to look at your work, right? Then, um, then you don't have to do too much of that. 
but obviously yeah like the research part is is important both like in terms of uh finding references for art but like research as in knowing what's what's working um and trending in the the world at the moment mm. that's a that's a great answer to a very um big and an although very very important question too because i mean that's that's something that a lot of us um starting out and and really any artist uh, or creative person has to think about is how can they they keep or grow or maintain you know all of that um nowadays uh with their audience um just a heads up also we have 10 minutes left um i know we've come so so far in in the time that we've had with you uh so i'm sure 10 minutes while it will fly by um we'll be able to make progress and and maybe maybe not finish this piece but but get it almost almost there uh because just well, now i've fast. seen that you've you've <laughs> added light to uh to the kids and i didn't even see you doing that so <laughs> just it's like oh great now there's uh edge lighting there it's like wonderful <laughs> helps them pop yeah absolutely hopefully not like physically pop oh goodness <laughs> me no that's for the inside the house jeff <laughs> spoilers mate later later yeah <laughs> oh yeah yay um and uh i think a rhetorical question but i'm gonna ask it anyway um from flynn does anyone actually eat candy corn um i, I really want to try it i want to try it just so i know how either like i just want to know what all the drama is about um because it's it seems to be a very divisive candy um and i just i want to try it is it hard or is it soft? i, I can't think really it has a soft center <laughs> but like a hard shell so kind of like um and of course all the candies that i'm thinking of are swedish ones uh have you ever had IKEA candy at IKEA? I haven't. I want to try. You should I tried absolutely the, the, try it. I tried everything else. Well, I think everything, like the, <laughs> the meatballs and the cakes and mm -hmm. the chocolates and all that, and the I'll drinks. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to recommend you some of my favorite uh, candies Definitely. there because there's some really really good ones. Um, but uh, there is one that's kind of like small, like smaller than this um but it has kind of a, a soft chewy marshmallowy ish but more like sugary chewy center and then it's coated with uh obviously flavorings of all all kinds um and then sugar so it has a like a hard sort of crust um mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like a soft soft center and that's what i imagine candy corn um to be like um so i'll be chomping down uh, when I try it for the first time for for better or for worse um, sorry in advance to my dentist <laughs> <laughs> that description fits pretty well for how she's gonna eat these people <laughs> <laughs> I have to keep the spooky thing going yeah, full time. I'm coming back to add more add more narrative to it <laughs> love it like what's the story what's the story <laughs> crunch is the story um I think we can safely say. Oops. And uh, Flynn pitching in with his thoughts is um, candy corn. I've never eaten a rock intentionally, uh, but I assume it's similar. So got that. And then <laughs> oh, rock. Jacob chiming in. Um, candy corn is very waxy, so it feels like eating a candle. Tastes like it too. Oh, interesting. I am Doesn't now a little sound... bit hesitant yeah. um, <laughs> about this uh, this quest to, <laughs> to eat candy corn. Um, but we shall see. If, if I come across it, I will try it. Um, but Hope you survive. Maybe I will avoid it. <laughs> With that said, though, we do have just about five minutes um, left of our stream today so i'm gonna do a bit of um end of stream housekeeping just to remind everyone to register um 
for Adobe Max if you haven't already. It's entirely free. Jeff's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Flynn's going to be there. So many other extremely talented creatives are going to be there and notable um, uh, celebrities and people like Tilda Swinton or Aaron Draplin. So yeah, it's going to be a wonderful time. Um, so Flynn, if you would please pop that link in the um, chat once again. Um, it's been absolutely wonderful hanging out with you again um, today, Jeff. And uh, it's been really fun. I don't want it to end because I just want to see where this piece goes, and I want to, you know, see the fate uh, of these uh, poor children. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna keep a lookout um, on your socials uh, to see if you you end up uh, finishing and uploading this piece. Um, but in saying that, where can people find you? Um, when we've finished up this stream? Um, I'm pretty much everywhere. So if you just Google Jeff Chan Designs, you'll see me on Twitter, you'll see me on um, ArtStation, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, everywhere. <laughs> Fantastic. Everywhere. Much like uh, the... No, I won't. That's too spooky. I won't say that. But spiderwebs. Spiderwebs are everywhere. <laughs> you should say it. No, no, I it's think it's Halloween. I think um, save that for the for the post stream chat. I reckon it might be a little bit too spooky. <laughs> um, but once again, thank you so much for hanging out and joining us, and thank you everyone for uh, joining us in the chat and your fantastic questions. We will of course be back again with more creative streams uh, next week, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, Jeff, do you have any? Uh, <laughs> final words so to speak that you want to tell our audience today before we head off um go see the adobe max and see look at all the sessions and um yeah check out all that free content that, that's pretty much all i want to say fantastic and with that i'm gonna play the max promo um so thank you again everyone i hope you have a wonderful day afternoon evening wherever you're tuning in from and um, maybe draw something spooky today thanks guys catch you later everyone bye bye